evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for spending your Saturday here. Now, this is Sinbad. The tale goes that Sinbad is Romani. He was born in Suhar and lived between Suhar and Sur. Now, we're going to go back to Sinbad in a minute, so stay tuned. A few weeks ago, I was um, conducting a session for one of the organizations. And the session included a module where you had to ask employees about how can we serve you better? What can the organization do to serve you better? And so one of the gentlemen, everyone was adding their five cents in, and everyone had very valid points and valid feedbacks. What struck me, one young gentleman, one young friend, let's call him Joey. So Joey, our friend right here, when I went to him and asked him, so Joey, you had, uh, there are so many demands. What is it that you want? And he said, I want to work less. I want a salary increase. And they want you to send me to UK for training. And for some reason, that didn't add up. Um, so you want me to pay you more to work less? He said, yes. OK, I couldn't get my head around it, so I left him. But being me, I had to go back and ask him, so Joey, can you tell me why do you think so? And Joey said, well, because you want me to do this, pointing at my laptop because he's an administrator. So I decided to, it's OK, forget about it. Few days later, there was another incident. But that incident, it was not the first time I encountered such. I went to a mall. And as I was parking my car, someone parked at a parking that is designated for people with special needs. So, being me, I creep in because I want to know, does this car have a sticker to, that says, you know, for special needs? But a big car and the door opens and a huge gentleman comes down from the car, jumps, right, because it's a pickup. And so I nicely go and I'm like, "Salam alaikum. I think you got mixed up because that's the parking for, you know, special needs. I think you want to park in the next one. And he says, it's none of your business. And he walks off. But again, <clears throat> I walked behind him. I'm like, uh, sir, actually, it is kind of my business. So could you please just remove the car? And he said, no, five minutes and walked off. He was a big guy, so I couldn't wrestle with him. So I decided just, you know go back to my business. Two days later, I was in a different mall, and I was driving another car parks in a parking for people with special needs. And I got mad. So I rolled down my window, and I, the gentleman did not speak Arabic. And I tell him, sir, that parking is not yours. It is for people with special needs. And he says, no, no, five minutes. I said, no, no five minutes. You need to find another parking. And he goes, why are you crazy? Made me feel like the Grinch was stealing his Christmas, right? But then I won, and he changed the parking. But then it got me thinking, what is this? Why does Joey want an increase in salary, but he wants to work less? And why do people park in a parking that's not theirs? How many of you parked in the wrong side of the road today? Uh, anyone? Uh, yesterday. When was the last time you blocked a, a relatively narrow aisle? So, because you're dropping someone, this person is going to take a minute or two, and then they end up taking 10 minutes. Uh, we're all guilty of that. Why do we do this, ladies and gentlemen? Because we are entitled. We think we're entitled to park at a parking that's not, the, not, not ours. We think we're entitled to get that salary increase. And to get my head around this, this book helped me really to conceptualize why we behave in such way. So Dr. John created this book and wrote this book, The Entitlement Cure, and I love the title. Why is it cure? Because it's not a disease that is physical, but it's a disease of an attitude. So entitlement, ladies and gentlemen, is the belief that one is inherently deserving of a privilege or special treatment. I park a 
at a disabled or people for special needs parking because it's easy for me. I want that salary increase because I want to be able to buy nice stuff, but then I want to go home at 12 noon because then I want to watch the, the game, right? There are two characteristics that we can, you know, that helps us understand this concept. The first one is I deserve. I deserve that promotion because the manager is my friend. I deserve that job because I am a citizen. I deserve that career move because my parents come from that tribe or that village. I deserve is the first characteristic. The second one is I am not responsible for it. A lot of times when I have the opportunity to speak you know, to um, a very dynamic crowd like yourself, I always get asked when I tell them, you know, you have to work hard for what you want and you really need to try. They say, well, you know, Muna, it's not very fair. It's unfair because you went to private schools and your family taught you, especially when they know that I'm, you know, I'm a mixed child. So they, no, your family taught you. We come from a humble family and my father and my mother did not speak English or Arabic. You studied abroad, and that's one of the questions that sometimes I get. To show them this, this was me. I changed. I combed my hair better now. <laughs> but I'm not putting this to brag, because there is nothing to brag about. I come from Iski, a very humble, a very small village. And I lived in a relatively challenging environment. There were times, and forgive me if I get emotional, but there were times with that 100 beza meant so much. Because if I buy that sand top, I can buy water the next day. And so I couldn't continue high school. I couldn't continue college, I wanted to say. I completed my high school, but then I had to work to support my mom and my sister. And I could have simply said, the country, the government owes me this. But I was blessed to think otherwise. I was blessed to go later on and get a degree and get my MBA. And it's not, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then I look at that, you know, that young girl with too much hair going on. And I really reflect that it takes a lot of hard work because no one owes you anything. No one does. Uh, the word I deserve is very disempowering. When I say I deserve, you are stripping, I deserve that promotion. You are stripping yourself of your power, of your ability to go and work and get something that you want. So all you are saying is that I'm going to sit here and wait for it because there's nothing else I can do. You need to give me the promotion because I can't. And then what happens? You destroy communities because then five years along the line is when you notice that I should have empowered myself. So how can we cure this? Instead of saying I deserve that promotion, say I'm responsible for it. You want something? You go and work for it. You go and make sure you make noise and get what you want. The government owes you nothing. Your family owes you nothing. You need to work hard for what you want. The second thing is, eat the frog first. Get done with the hard things first. Make sure you get the difficult and, and hard things done in the morning. That's what successful people do. It is a habit. So what they do is their morning is very tough and they get a lot of things done and their afternoon is a bit more relaxed. So before we ask for that promotion, did I work for it? Did I get the degree that I needed to get that job? Did I learn that language that I need in order for me to proceed in life? So there was a time where I was conducting an interview and so, uh, you know, a young gentleman, I'm like, okay, what, what do you like to do? What position are you applying for? And he says, I want to be a manager. Good. You hear that 
very often in an interview. So I want to be a manager. Good. Don't we all? You mean now or later in two, three years? He said, no, now. And I asked him my favorite question. But why you want to be a manager? Because I have a bachelor degree. Yeah. <laughs> and it struck me, um, yeah, sir, everyone in the room kind of have a bachelor degree. But then why? I studied for it. And you know, my father called this person and they told me to come here. So this is another way of be feeling entitled, right? So what do I want to do now is that I want to go back to Sinbad. Sinbad was born in a, from a rich family. He had money, he had wealth. But was Sinbad, did he ever act out of entitlement? Did he feel I need to, ha to be the captain of the ship because that's where my family came from? No. He went on seven voyages, seven journeys, and in each one of them encountered hardship that anyone else with that wealth and that money would have given up because I'm entitled for it. How many of you imagine it's 7 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning, you're, you're you know, in your car waiting, and then someone, a car from the right side, comes and passes and cuts the road. And we're, uh, sir, like we have, we were, like we're waiting, right? With disregard to you, to the cars, to everyone. Would have Sindibad done that? Would have? I don't think so. Because when we, t when we look at Sindibad, he never acted out of entitlement, but they went there and earned it. If you are late, you've got to wait. If that parking is not yours, find another one. If you want that job, don't sit around and ask for it, but go and work for what you want. So instead of feeling that entitled, ladies and gentlemen, what we have to do is actually go and work for what we want. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.